All right, today we got something really, really cool. We got two special things. One is we have Randy the Builder actually on camera. Um, this is so special that he actually came out of the garage, of the team garage. And we always say, uh, we, I always say we, uh, Randy's part of the team. He's the mechanical genius. We have an electronics genius, another Randy. Maybe he'll show up someday. But right now, he built a car that is just unbelievable. Um, it's something he owns in real life, a Bronco, and it's something he's been dreaming of for, for many years. So, so Randy, talk about the, uh, the, the, the brand model, the original vision for this vehicle. So I was looking at wanting to get a Bronco that, uh, it's a scale Bronco that was somewhat, in my opinion, true to scale. And the only one I was able to find that I was happy with was the Tamiya uh, Bronco body that was available. Um, but uh, during the build, I didn't realize how small it was, but it is, in my opinion, the most scale that I can find. So it is a Tamiya CC01. Yeah. Built in uh, a long time ago, maybe 10 years ago. Uh, they now have the CC02. And what is the, it's, it's, what is the wheelbase? I believe it's, uh, the, old, the, the CC02 is 10.5 and this one is? Nine and a half. Nine, nine and a half inches. <laughs> Pretty small. So it's not only shorter, it's also narrower. So we'll talk about some of the uh, challenges and opportunities that came about uh, with, with this build. First, we needed a body. You had a body and then you were gonna build a chassis from scratch. Yes, I, <laughs> I was gonna build a chassis from scratch and started pricing everything out. And then I came across the SSD Trail King Pro and I was pretty happy with it. Came with the scale transmission, scale engine. Uh, chassis is pretty the same as all the other chassis I've noticed and that's kind of what inspired me to get that chassis for the build it was price it came with all the components I wanted to start with and that and that's where I basically took off so for the body comparison you can see here this is your 12.3 pro line Bronco 73 Bronco body um, for me it just I wasn't happy with it. it was just way too big in my opinion and like I said but you can see just the difference and size. I mean, this is thing's so tiny in relation to 12.3 roll base. And then as far as the chassis goes, um, this kind of gives you an idea. You know, the SSD chassis was originally 12.3 inches, and now you're looking at this one, which is roughly nine, anywhere from nine to nine and three quarters, 10 inches. <laughs> so a lot of work was needed nine and to, a half, to get it to maybe this Maybe nine line. and three quarters. Yes. If you stretch out the, uh, the springs and whatnot. So that was our building blocks. You know, it's like, it's like a little uh, uh, Lego challenge, uh, but now it's it's time to execute. And I think Randy started with with the body. Uh, yeah. So tell us about the body. That that the Mia body is nice, better than what's available out there, but it's not quite scale. It's not quite up to snuff. So he luckily he's good with the Exacto knife. Yeah, like like Francis says, I have I have a Bronco, a classic Bronco. This it's not the one to one scale. Uh, it's different color and such. But I, I just I wanted a uh, to do it as as true to form as I possibly could. So I got kind of carried away. You guys know about me splice or uh, slicing up some Lexan to re make a removable top. So I had that in mind. So what I ended up doing is I took this perfectly good <laughs> <laughs> Lexan shell of a body and hacked up every panel I could think of. And the thought was to have the Lexan mimic your body panels of a vehicle. Um, so what I ended up doing is basically creating the actual Bronco tub um, and, and recreating all the components and moving parts. Um, so you can see where you have the- So first, first you chopped off the roof, right? Oh yeah, first it was the roof, and then from there I kind of just, uh, I didn't stop with the exacto knife. Because <laughs> my thought was, well, if the roof comes off, Broncos always had doors that came off. And then I was like, well, now I got a chassis with an engine, I wanted to show off the engine, so now the hood opens up. Yeah. And then being that you have a scale engine, you have to have a scale engine, uh, um, you know, a inner fenders, your firewall, your radiator support. And so I actually ended up making a front clip. The front clip comes off. And so essentially making a Bronco tub out of uh, styrene plastic. So the front clip, uh, Randy explained to me, 
uh, we'll we'll take it apart uh, and we'll we'll show you some of the some of the kind of the, the, the video of it. Uh, t tell us about the front clip, uh, just the description of what so, it is. So the front clip is uh, essentially your front fenders and your grill that comes off in one, one piece. And I figured, you know, to save me time and, and somewhat of my sanity, I try to make it a little easier for me. So the rear quarter panels and tailgate's one piece and the front's one piece kind of saved me some time. But I did get carried away on uh, making hinges that allow you to Take the doors off <laughs> and Hand, handmade hinges <laughs> yeah out of copper like i say a little carried away and then making inside door panels uh the door framing um there's a magnet inside of here and inside of here which allows it to stay closed stay closed huh um the windshield and door uh, glass do have frames uh, to mimic because the top's off so you got to show that detail so the to mimic the look and also to give the Lexan some rigidity. And I will say that the Tamiya body, when I sliced it, it actually stayed true to form. Right. Uh, it didn't bow out. It didn't have some weird, you know, uh, flexing of any kind. It literally stayed. Right. On, a, on, a, on our other body, we ha Randy had to build these uh, structures, these skeletons. Yeah. Because the, the, uh, the Lexan just wouldn't hold form. So again, getting carried away, I did do interior. Um, the seat does. So tell us about the tub and uh, what you did to create one. So I took a uh, 16th inch uh, styrene plastic and, and CA glue and basically glued um, each piece and component to the Lexan. I scuffed it up first so that there was some bite and, and started building the, the tub of the, the body just like the, the real thing. And so um, again, that's how you got the inner door panels uh the i'm sorry the, the dashboard the dashboard my mm -hmm. bad my the dashboard and and that was really the reason i chose the tamiya because the grill of the body was actually really nice it was it was chrome right. it was a plastic piece to separate it had you know holes for the led lights and so that right there was also a selling feature that i liked about that body mm -hmm. tell us about these doors um obviously lexan is just a thin one-dimensional piece but you, you're able to make a 3d piece out of it but what, what do you do to create that well, the first I had to do is is figure out, you know, obviously matching up the the inner. So when I first made the tub, I had to figure out. Um, I, I first thought was going to have the top uh, attached with magnets, like we did the scout, and so that was the first thing I started building. And then once I got my depth for you know the the uh, door uh, frame, and then I started making the actual doors themselves to match the inside. Uh, of the actual see. tub mm -hmm. and and then from there again it's just layered plastic um, painted glue is it hollow it is hollow mm -hmm. um, so I mean you do seam see seams um, here which we'll show you at a close-up view mm -hmm. but uh, I had to do that in a way where um, you know I had to reset and countersink the heads because with the closing um, they did have they hit a little bit yeah so uh, again making the dashboard scales I possibly could um, for all the little knobs and components for your heater, your lights, your radios, I just used the small screws that you would get for um, like your wheels, mm -hmm. you know, your your uh, your um, the rings, um, bead locks. And then what I found is I um, went with my daughter over to the craft store and found this foam that you know usually used as placemats um, or just crafting. And so I thought it'd be perfect because it came in different thicknesses. And I was able to shape it like a seat. And then I was able to cut the grooves in. The driver's seat doesn't have it because the driver covers it. But um, uh, you can see where I just carved in the um, pleats that the mm -hmm. seats usually came with. And then so, and so for the interior, what I had to, to keep in mind is um, once the interior was built, which I made first, I kind of forgot about the electronics. Yeah. <laughs> so, so keeping in mind that I know I had to build a real seat to try to stay true to form, I took the opportunity, like true to form, the seat folds up, gives me the room I need, and then I made a hatch to get to my battery. And so here's the rear seat. And so with the body mounted, the chassis, now I have access to the battery. Basically the only point in place I can put a battery. Right. So. The roll, roll bar made that or bought that? Yeah, so, um, 
everything on here is pretty much made. I wish I was able to buy a lot of this stuff, but um, I, I went to buy, I did buy a row bar and apparently uh, it was short. It was about a quarter inch too short or, or narrow or too wide, I mean. And so I ended up just making a brand new hoop and then just reusing the down bars and just welding them on. Uh -huh. um, and that's a piece of steel? Yeah, it's just, a, a, I think it's 3 16 uh, just mild steel, uh, cold road steel. Um, and it's just, yeah, pretty much made a robot. So when this rolls down the hill, like 100 feet, you'll still, still protect it? Sure, I hope <laughs> I don't ever have to do that, but <laughs> I mean, if it happens, it happens. So. This won't break. Yeah. Okay, anything else on the in interior um, before we move on to? Yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, I went to the, again, went to with my daughter and she was having to buy some fabric for a school project. I found some fabric that mimicked carpet. So I got carpet that fits inside. I mean, totally looks scale. That's true. That's, uh, um, that's got a little texture to it. Yeah, a little, a little going a little overboard. But again, taking the same plastic that as I did with the door panels, I did the quarter panels inside. And this chrome strip was uh, aluminum tape right. that you would use for, you know, ducting. So uh, the actual duct tape, wow. aluminum tape. Cut little strips, put it in there. And I just took a file and made the, the oh, pleats in there. Yeah. And those little knobs are... Yeah, he's screws. Yep, oh, yep. So, um, and then for the interior components, like the steering wheel, the shifter, the steering column, mm -hmm. and the uh, armrests on the doors was an axle piece. Uh, I think it was an interior kit mm -hmm. that you find. It came with like three different sizes steering wheels. And so I just took the items off that. I saw I saw the items that came with, so I was intrigued by that. And that was a, that was um, that allowed me to use the armrests and the window cranks, which work perfect because mm -hmm. that's that's literally what's in the Bronco and so, um, so yeah worked out real nice talk about the hood and the grill so yeah the hood and grill um, hood is just like the doors I had to make my own hinge um, and getting sliced it from the Lexan body and uh, the grill came with a decal so normally the grill is painted silver and the whole um, grill. yeah and uh, uh, depending on your the making or the I'm sorry the model of the Bronco you bought, so I did mine color to match, and so I had to mask off all the chrome to get my chrome strip that's normally on the Bronco, and then just had to cut out the little letters um, to to say Ford, and uh, again we'll do a close up on the letters there, and so just some just some cutting out of the decals to try to get everything as as close as I can. But um, so yeah, this is this is the body, and it That's weighs it. 591 grams, which is which, is, uh, which is not bad. I uh, think all that weight's roll bar. Yeah, <laughs> solid steel roll bar. Yeah. All right, let us move on to the chassis. Some something's gotta encase all this, huh? Yeah. So here's the chassis, and and comparing again the SSD if. The wheelbase differences, this is, you know, it varies, uh, nine and a half, ten inches. Here's your 12.3. So, quite a bit difference. Wow. You know, 1.55 wheels. Um, here's your 1.9s. Uh, I don't remember the size of the tires. I think they're three, three inches or something. Yeah. Um, these obviously is 4.75. So, it is a lot of work. Wow. A lot of work. Um, so not only did I have to reduce the wheelbase, I had to actually, I had to narrow the wheelbase to fit the body. Wow. So all this was to fit the body. So we have this chassis. As soon as he built it, I made a video of it. And uh, click here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link to it so you'll see what we started with. We, I'm not sure we actually ran it. Maybe, no. Maybe uh, <laughs> you just rolled it around. And then he quickly went to work uh, with it. And this is from that to that is what it came, came, came up with. Yeah. So this, this thing had to, not only did the length have to shorten uh, as far as the frame rails to fit underneath the body, what I did is I made it where the bumper mounts just protrude a little bit past the body so I can actually do scale bumpers if I decide right. to, you know, the flat chrome or, you know, some winch mounts, whatever I decide later. So, so in addition to moving or shortening the frame rails, I had to take the motor and tranny, 
redrill the holes in the frame, which I found out are somewhat tempered. I went through like yeah. five bits. <laughs> I ended up having to... Props to SSD. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A, that's a very hard, and a hard chassis. That's why it was a stiff frame. Uh -huh. So, but yeah, so I ended up having to heat it up and essentially they call it kneeling it in order to get enough bite to make new holes. And just, I gave up after oh, a few. Oh, just to be able to drill it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so what I had to do is I had to move the motor and tranny forward. Um, I know a lot of people, what they do is they're making spacer kits that keeps the transmission the same place and moves the engine cover forward. Mm -hmm. And then your electric motor still kind of protrudes down. So how did you shorten the wheelbase, the, you know, the two, the two wheel wells? Um, did you keep that or did you just chop the ends? I just chopped the end. The SSD mm -hmm. came with a, lo a large, I mean, a long flat long rear flat. portion of the frame, mm -hmm. which would work great on that Land Cruiser truck we yeah. did. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up just, just hacking that. Okay. So after I moved the tranny forward and the motor tranny, uh, motor forward to kind of match up to the shock mount, the, the wheel placement stayed the same, the shock placement stayed the same because of the Panhard, and the steering mounts stayed the same. I just moved the motor and tranny forward. Yeah. And then once I did that, I did have to shorten the wheelbase in the front, which is cutting and um, the uh, lower links down. And then because of the rear, I wanted to do leaf spring anyways, mm -hmm. I had to just literally move everything forward. Right. Um, and you'll see a little close-up shot of how tiny and short this right. front drive shaft is. It's only about that big. So before we move on to suspension, let me do my chassis test. A little bit of flex, but not not much. And uh, you did. Um, he did. Uh, this is different from the SSD, the front and rear suspension, right? What did you do? So the front um, is. So what I had to do, if you look underneath here, I had to literally narrow the axles and um, shave off the three link mounts on the rear. Rear axle is really easy. I have a mm -hmm. lathe, so I was able to relathe how the axle slides in the center diff. Mm -hmm. And so I literally just cut it and re-stepped it for it to slip in. It's actually pretty easy. Uh, making the leaf spring mount was a little more difficult. And as it is, I um, hate to bring it up, but I have to remake these. <laughs> I'm not happy <laughs> with it. All right. So anyways, for the front was really challenging because you have your steering um, knuckles and the three links was part of the, you know, again, like the rear part of the axle shafts, I essentially took them off because I couldn't narrow it without making everything off-centered mm -hmm. or, or off. So I had to shave them off completely, narrow the axle, and then remake the three link mounts. Wow. And then reinstall them. So it, it was a quite, a bit of, quite a bit of work. A lot more work than I expected. I almost canceled the project yeah. because of <laughs> because that. Because of that part. Because of that part. Yeah, he, he had doubts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I almost gave right, up. Right around there. So and, um, and then the uh, the, the drive train, drive shafts. Yeah, drive shafts. So it was SSD drive shafts. Is the only ones I was able to find. Uh, you know, a short time period I was trying to stay within. That are and keep in mind that their drive shafts are uh, splined all the way through the length of the shaft. So another brand that I I, I picked up, only the end of the shaft was. Uh, splined for that for that um, slip uh, yoke portion mm -hmm. and as soon as I cut that off I lost that drive lost, shaft was useless spline, yeah. so I, I found these and they ended up working perfect because I, I had to really shorten these these are real short especially the front right um, there's only about this much of the the outer uh, drive shaft that's that's used right um, so that tells you how how, how nice that product and even, is um, even with the short Tough angles, it's able to articulate okay. Yeah, and again, this, you know, it's not going to be a rock crawler. It's a, it's a scale trail rig, so it's, there's not much flex to it. It's mm -hmm. more scale than anything else. Um, then I found some uh, 90 millimeter um, shocks, scale shocks by RC four wheel drive. Um, I still got to get some for the rear, um, mm -hmm. for the leaf springs, because it kind of bobs a little bit. Uh, spring rate book can probably change, but it, it actually sits yeah. Quite well. You got some nice sag. Yeah, yeah. 
And the rear, the rear spring is okay too, huh? Yeah, rear spring rate. I ended up uh, having the soft springs, um, and then I took the original Tamiya springs that I had on hand, and I I made a uh, overload spring, just real short to compensate for this roll bar weight. That roll bar is a little heavy for being solid right. steel rod. And so I might end up doing the RC four wheel drive, uh, not the super soft, but there's another in between softness mm -hmm. that comes with two or three leaves. I might go with that and then play with those to see see how I can kind of increase the back. But like I said, overall it sits actually quite nice. Yeah. I'm not I'm not I'm actually happy with. It. I'm not disappointed. Um, had to make sliders. Made to make sliders to protect the body. Um, That's right. Okay. So I made some aluminum sliders. Cut down on weight. Um, just simply bent them to to come up along the bottom yep. rocker of the body. Meet up with the body so perfectly. Mm -hmm. pr protect it, salvage <laughs> all the work I these, did. These on. are some of the best performing sliders we've ever tried because they are butt up against the body and very, very slippery. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about motor and electronics. Yeah, so I had to, I was, I was short on space. I did all this work and my second thought and, and you know, my afterthought, unfortunately, was electronics. I completely, <laughs> I was so in, engulfed in making the body fit the chassis, I then realized, okay, now I have a space issue. So luckily, um, MST? Uh, yes. Yeah, they have a low profile Servo. MK, MKS. Oh, MKS. I'm sorry. Low um, profile servi, servo that, you know, I'm not, I don't need a big torque servo. Like, you know, it's not a crawler. So I was able to find a low profile. $160 servo right there. Yeah, which <laughs> a little painful in the wallet. Um, but it looks nice. Um, and then I went with the uh, Spectrum five channel mini receiver, which fits right on top. I haven't made a a shroud for the radiator yet yeah, that's again another it's, everything's work in progress right you're never finished yeah, that's right that's right um and then i went with the hobby wing esc waterproof 1040. Um, and it fits right under the driver's seat uh space because where the driver's seat is the floor pan uh, comes out more a little bit see. extra room so it fits okay. right there then again my only option to where i can place the battery i had to make a tray and and then again take the seat out to get to it because the body mounts, the way the body mounts, it's screwed on. It's screwed on. Um, so it's almost once, like a hard body, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there ain't pins or nothing. So once it's screwed on, and the only thing you really need to get to is the battery anyways. Right. So, um, so How I do you turn it on? Oh, you could uh, slip your finger. Yeah, slip my finger the, through the, the rear well, well yeah. and um, and get to it from there. So what about the motor? Where's the motor on this little... Motor is tucked away, uh -huh. hidden underneath the motor here, or the uh, engine, plastic yeah. engine, uh, uh -huh. which was nice. What did you go with? Um... Oh, the Holmes Hobby. Holmes Hobby. Uh, was Craw it Craw 27 Master. turn? Crawl Master. Five, had to be a 540, huh? Yes, um, yes. I was given no. a, or had a 550. No 550 allowed. Which was about 3 sixteenths too long yeah. uh, for this engine Yeah, cover. <laughs> I'm not like, just trim it. Yeah. And, and, I, and, and now I see, there's no trimming yeah. here. Yeah. But, uh, so yeah, overall, I'm, I, it came out real nice. I think it was... Uh, I want, to say, I want to say it was more luck because everything kind of just fell in place. All right, we're all fit. Motor, electronics, body. Why don't we uh, just, just do a little operation? Uh, let's, let's see you running, Randy. And then this weekend, we're going to go out on the trail, have a little follow cam, maybe a lead cam, and, and really get this thing on, on our nice creek trail. Yep, so there you go. All works. Forward, back. And can't wait to get on the trail and try to see this thing, see how this thing goes. Right on. So, so Randy, what did you learn uh, in, in this journey? What, what, do you have any advice for, for our audience? I'm, I'm sure they'll have advice for, for Randy as well. Patience. <laughs> Patience. Uh, like I said, just you know, sticking with what your project is, take the time, take a break, rest your mind, and then just go back at it. Uh, try not to give yourself such a too short of a window to com complete your project. Uh, right. You burn yourself out, you get frustrated, but yeah, just take you take your time, step back, and just kind of think it through, and then um, and then hopefully it all comes out. Yep. So please let us know in the comments what you think uh, of this project. If you have ideas for 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 future projects, not that we want to lose Randy for another few weeks, but 
uh, let us know. What, you know, what do you think of um, these little things that we're into? So we're going to be trading this weekend. So uh, tune in for more of that.